welcome to Sculpture Studios. Today, you're joining us for another project for the London Free Sculpture Garden in Regent's Park. We've been contacted once again by Laurie Shabibi, an art gallery in Dubai, who host and curate exhibitions that feature pieces of work by prominent Dubaian artists and sculptors. After creating a piece of sculpture called Red Stack for Dubaian artist Sheikh Almaz role in 2022, we're now back in 2024 with an artist called Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim. A lot of Mohammed's work, both two and three dimensional, are heavily influenced by the dry, desert landscapes of the UAE. The forms and images in his paintings often resemble something primal. They're often bone or tool-like, or something historic that's resurrected from a cave wall drawing, or something imprinted in stone. His sculptures often take inspiration from these dry, bone-like skeletal structures as well, but also inspired by the United Arab Emirates national tree, the Garf Tree. This is a hardy, drought-resistant piece of nature, capable of withstanding the elements out in the harsh landscapes of the desert. Something hardy to withstand the elements is exactly where we come in, as we're creating two pieces of sculpture, named the Garf Tree and the Form, which have been chosen from Mohammed's existing collection, to be blown up in scale to 6 and 8 feet tall, and recreated in more durable materials. Mohammed's three-dimensional forms are usually hand-modelled from water-based materials. They usually have a rough, organic, mulch-type finish, and we're here today to create something for him that's ready to withstand the outside world. Each piece will have a steel structure running up through the entire form, whereby this will then be clad and carved from polystyrene. Though the surface will be coated in glass fibre, we're doing quite a bit of research into how best to replicate the original finish on Mohammed's original models, but this time suitable for outdoors. As a commercial studio, this is one of those projects where, although we're using our own artistic abilities, we're trying to recreate the artist's style as closely as possible. The build begins with the construction of the metalwork armature, where we're creating a wide, square footprint on the floor to be buried under the earth in Regent's Park to give the sculpture stability. Two sculptures means two square frames being created, and these form the foundations of the vertical armature that's being built on the top. It's beneficial for us to be able to tackle as many aspects of the projects as we can right here in our studio. For metal work like this, being able to do our own welding and being able to cut and make amendments as either we or our clients see fit just streamlines the projects. There are a few instances, such as specialist engineering or a chroming process that we need to outsource for, but for something like this, being able to manage everything ourselves just helps speed everything up and means we can keep a proper eye on things. For each project that we take on at the studio, we're used to working from various levels of references. Sometimes we're sent 3D virtual files or 3D scans, but neither of which exist for this project. The easiest way for us to replicate something identically is to create a direct mould and a cast, but as we don't have Mohammed's original models here in the studio, and also the fact these aren't going to be identical replicas but instead are going to be blown up in scale, a mould and a cast isn't possible. For this project, we've been sent images of the two existing sculptures and a couple of walk-around videos to work from, which, in fairness, could be seen as a bit of a step up from two years ago. We were literally sent references of Shaker's previous work and a simple 2D side-on sketch of the intended sculpture. The argument could be made, of course, that though there weren't many references to directly copy from, this proved to be quite beneficial in a way, as it allowed Aiden a bit more freedom and creative license not to directly have to copy from an already existing model. Right, here we have Ruth. Now this is how good Ruth is. How complex is that? Right, well let's see if it fits, eh? Mm. Nice 
truth. Carry on, carry on. I think we've had much uh, exterior talking here. So do you want to talk us through the, the two forms and the progress so far? Yeah. Um, as you've seen from the rest of the video, the previous part, we created a metalwork structure that goes up through the whole lot, which mimics the, um, the original one, but a bit bigger. We clad the whole thing in polystyrene, so the metalwork is in the centre of the whole thing. Carved it all, visually, as we're not machines, but We've got it as close to it as possible and then I've sprayed the whole thing black and I'm taking it down a little bit all over the place, exactly all over and that will allow for the fiberglass and the, um, the papier mache feel texture on top. So hopefully by the time you've done that it's built up to the right size again. But ha I'm having to think about reducing it all over slightly so we can bring it back up when it's hard coating. But getting there. And I think uh, just a few little bits, we'll just reduce it again from that thickness to that thickness to allow for the fiberglass. Over here, the second form. This one's ever so slightly more complicated in the sense that the other one is pretty much 2D and this is three dimensional. Once again, the metalwork armature running up through the entire form. Um, these are all kind of been carved as just generic cylindrical shapes, but um, Aiden's away next week and he's leaving me to just finishing up, adding all the finishing touches. Once again, this will be slimmed down to a degree to allow for the fiberglass and the papier mache texturing over the top. Everything is very, very solid. And hopefully be it this being in Regent's Park, being out in the open in the public, everything will be looked after quite well anyway. Um, so hopefully it doesn't act as a, too much as a climbing frame. But yeah, the armature inside and the glass fiber will provide a fair bit of strength, I think. We've tried to take, um, take screenshots of the videos we've been sent from all four sides so that we can get this as close to the artist's original form as possible. Oh my gosh, that's not the secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil, is it? <laughs> of course it is. Once the form has been finished and sanded down, the sticky back tinfoil gives a quick protective coating before going on with polyester resin and glass fibre. Epoxy resin, of course, wouldn't melt the polystyrene, but the cost difference between the two resins means that the foil layer is a more beneficial route for our projects. As you can see, last night I finished just above the halfway point here with the resin and the glass fibre. We're actually going on with two layers of fibreglass for a really sturdy build-up. And the purpose of stopping at this point here is that first of all we can keep everything at ground level, we can easily get around the shape and it's just much more comfortable to work. And without having to go up and down ladders, it actually saves on a lot of time. Um, the second point, probably more important, is that uh, unfortunately it is currently the hottest week of the year here in the UK in 2024 and uh, so in terms of comfort not particularly comfortable particularly working with resin um, and with the heat the resin naturally wants to cure quicker so by just coming up to this point here with the first layer I can then reset get started on the second layer 
before the first batch of resin has had time to cure properly and this just means you can bond the two layers of fiberglass together without too much issue. If I carried on going up the rest of the shape, faffing about up here on ladders and trying to get the first layer done all in one hit, by the time it comes to me resetting, the first layer of resin has cured. If there are any fiberglass strands or mat that hasn't been laminated down properly, these are now rock solid, they're spiky, they're sharp. The whole form needs to be sanded down before you can then go on with the second layer. And you never quite bond everything together as well as if the resin were both batches were fresh at the same time in the first place. I hope that makes sense. Um, the main thing is that I keep this collar here nice and neat so there are no sharp points, no spiky bits, so that now that everything is cured in the morning, I can carry on working on the rest of the sculpture seamlessly without having to sand anything down, trim or prune anything. And also now this is hard, rock solid, I can lay the whole sculpture down, work on this top section all at ground level. So I'm even saving time by not having to go up ladders there today um, as I can lay this down. Um, I'm getting started on this because Aiden is away for the week. Um, he's back in on Monday, so I'm just making sure I've got everything fiberglassed with a good sturdy couple of layers and then we can sand everything down and start working on the texture detail that the client is after. It's actually quite a task to try and replicate a, a papier-mâché mulch type finish um, with materials that aren't papier-mâché basically. Um, we need to make sure this is suitable to go outside but also trying to stay faithful to the original brief that we've been given by the client and to match the artist's original sculpture. Um, we really hope the artist appreciates the way this is being created. Naturally, it's going to be made in a very different way, presumably, to how they made their first piece. Different processes, different material and different size. But we, it's our job to make sure this is a true representation of their original artwork. So um, we really hope the client and the artist appreciates the process and being able to see everything come together. So that's it so far. Here, you can see the numerous test samples that we tried to work out which materials would be best to use to achieve the desired finish. We used resins, glass fibre, newspapers, tissue paper, cork, concrete, powders, fillers and resin based renders, all with the intention of achieving that papier mache type effect. It's one of those projects where we feel it's really beneficial to show these processes as quite often there's a lot more work that goes on behind the scenes than first meets the eye. So here we have a little R&D going on in the studio. If we look at the references on photographs here where the original sculptures were made from a papier mache material over the top for the colour and the texture, we now need to replicate this with a sturdy resin based material so that it's suitable and durable to go outside. What we found was using newspaper or actual papier mache didn't really work. Going over with a concrete wouldn't have worked either because the adhesion to the resin on the sculpture wouldn't have been great. And ultimately, we needed to replicate not only the texture but also the colours as well. So here we've had loads of batches made up, and what we're using is kind of a wood chipping material kind of material you might use for a sort of pet bedding and we're going on with loads of different colours, various batches that we can then basically pick a mix, mix and match to kind of replicate each of the sections of colours where there's loads of tiny different specks of greens, whites, browns and pinks, creams, blues, kind of all the different hues that you'd expect to find in someone's skin if you looked close enough. We found this is the best method, create a batch of each colour of all the different flecks, of all the different hues, impregnated with resin, and because it's resin going on to resin, the adhesion will be significantly better than anything water-based, like a concrete or anything like that.
For the finish on the form, the final texture isn't so demanding. We're creating a rough surface using a layered resin mix and sanding everything down so that any wandering hands won't be in any danger. We then proceed on with 2K car body paints, whereby we add a primer layer first, followed by the final colours chosen by the client and the artist. To help remove some of the glossiness of the artwork, Aiden goes over the form with a semi-sheen lacquer. This creates a protective coating over the paint and just helps to soften that plastic shine for the end result. For the garf tree, the texturing is somewhat a more involved process than the form, but when it's complete, we really hope that the client and Mohammed are pleased with the end result and the way in which we got there. With everything now complete here in the studio, it's off to Regions Park for the 2024 London Freeze exhibition. Mohammed's two sculptures are part of a collection of over 20 different pieces that feature in the sculpture garden. This is open in London for everyone to enjoy as a free and open plan exhibit. This open Regent's Park exhibition is accessible to the public until the 27th of October 2024, whereby the sculptures will then presumably be rehomed. We know that over the last couple of years, Shaker's Red Stack has travelled to numerous locations in and outside of the UK, and we believe it's finding a permanent home at the University of Birmingham. When it comes to Mohammed's sculptures, we wonder where they'll eventually end up and where their final resting places will be. Thank you very much to Laurie Shabibi for coming to us again with another fantastic project, and we look forward to any sculptural instalments in the future. Thank you also to artist Mohammed Ahmed Ibrahim for the original concepts, and for providing us with an artistic challenge with recreating his work in a new way. We always love hearing what you guys at home think of our projects and our channel, so please feel free to drop a comment below, and by all means subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with our latest videos. A big thank you to all of our patrons who support our projects and the creation of our videos. We love having you guys on board. And if you'd like to support our family run studio, you can find our Patreon details below. However big or small, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching.